This episode is being brought to you by my good friends over at McLaren and Associates. McLaren and Associates is the premier sell side advisory firm for dental practice owners seeking a DSO affiliation or private equity partnership. Their team is comprised of experienced sell side advisors whose sole focus is to educate practice owners regarding their EBITDA and practice value, then create a highly competitive environment among multiple DSO buyers to create multiple options to maximize your outcome from the sale. If you're interested in learning more more about DSO transactions and the options available in today's marketplace, reach out to Brandon Moncrief at McLaren and Associates at 512-660-8505 or go to dentaltransitions.com. That's 512-660-8505 or go to dentaltransitions.com. This is one of the biggest decisions in a practice owner's journey. So make sure you're working with the best. McLaren and Associates. The Dentalpreneur Podcast. Okay, doctor, it's time to put down that handpiece. You're listening to the show dedicated to helping dentists get their lives back. It's time to decrease your stress, increase your profitability, and regain your passion. Now introducing your host, Dr. Mark Costas. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Dental Honor Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Mark Costas. What's up, friends? I hope you're doing great out there today. My voice is fried. I just got off an airplane from St. Louis, Missouri. Good old St. Louis, Missouri. We had a, a mastermind meeting there with 200 of our awesome mastermind members. Um, it was super fun. Dr. Dan Brisky was actually there. He gave a really cool presentation with Dr. Tahir Dune on how to transition from a GP to a super GP, which I mean, by um, anybody's definition, Dr. Brisky and Dr. Dune are super GPs. Um, today, I want to welcome Dan back as a multiple, multiple, multiple time guest on the Dentalpreneur podcast. And also we have a brand new friend, Ryan Rolla, who's joining us today. Ryan is the founder of Prestige Anesthesia, which focuses on in-office anesthesia for dent for dentists. He's a CNR, he's a CRNA, and he specializes in dental anesthesia. He's been doing that for five years, and he is a brand new part of the CSI team as an IV sedation instructor within the IV sedation um, continuing education uh, realm within CSI. So welcome, gentlemen. How are we doing it today? Good to have you both. What's up, man? Awesome. Good to be here. Happy Tuesday. Good to yes. see you almost four days in a row. <laughs> I know. What's up with that? Yeah, this is this is yeah. awesome. And I wish you guys had the benefit of being able to see Ryan. He's a very handsome man, very well manscaped. Um, he has an interesting <laughs> uh, background. He's an ex uh, personal trainer, and I can only see him from the shoulders up, but I can tell he's very fit. He's got one of those very square, uh, chiseled jaw lines. So I'm just I'm just painting the picture here, guys. I'm just painting the picture for uh, what this. <laughs> it's like super excited that. Uh, that uh, you guys are joining us today. I always find it interesting when there's like somebody that's in anesthesia, that's particularly attractive. It's like, you're wasting your, you're wasting your good looks on, on the patient base that you've selected to work on because they're all asleep. So you can only dazzle. Exactly. Them. They don't even remember, yeah. They don't even get to remember us. So it's like, it's like you can only dazzle them with your handsomeness, Ryan, for like two minutes before they're sound asleep in the dental chair. What's up with that? Yeah. <laughs> Macomley, our patients will say they had this awesome dream of this really muscular guy. And then I tell them at their post-op visit that it wasn't a dream. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's so good. It's so good. All right, uh, Dan, we'll start with you, buddy. So um, one of the new things that I'm super proud about uh, as far as a new um, deliverable inside the Colorado Surgical Institute uh, is our IV sedation uh, curriculum. Um, the ability to have IV sedation in a dental office is a game changer and it has been for a lot of our super GPs that have gone through. Uh, A lot of the members inside DSI that have integrated IV sedation and advanced clinical procedures into their dental practices have really made a huge 
um, difference and stride within their communities, but also within their own dental practices. So tell me a little bit about, uh, I guess, the genesis of adding IV sedation into the CSI curriculum, the difference it's made into your practice, Dan, personally, and uh, what people can expect if they decide to go down the path of IV sedation with CSI. Yeah, of course. So we've been working on this uh, curriculum for about a year now. And Dr. Dune's brother is a board certified anesthesiologist out in California. So he wrote the curriculum for IV sedation. And what I've noticed over the years is, uh, especially implementing IV sedation in the office, you have to get also a CRNA on board uh, ones because you can do IV sedation in office, but it's not for every single procedure, right? So we recommend it of the journey to go either learn oral station first, if you really want to kind of tiptoe in. Um, if not, then kind of dive head head first into the IV station realm and start doing it in your own office. Um, but even with IV station office, you still have to have a gangster on board. And I truly believe the CRNAs are the true gangsters when it comes to the anesthesia world, because they're the ones doing it every day in and out, right? Uh, so for me, I picked our favorite anesthesiologist. I work with, oh my God, I don't know how many, like 12 to 16 CRNAs over the years. And by far, my favorite has been Ryan. Uh, really, really awesome guy. Very, 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 very talented speaking. Uh, he does a great job, really kind of uh, dumbing down the ideas a little bit too. <laughs> uh, because, you know, anesthesia can get very complex, but he's found a really good way because he specializes in, in in office anesthesia of just talking about how to use drugs like pro, uh, not propofol, but midazolam, fentanyl, maybe even Presidex later down the road and how to integrate them in lower anxiety in the office. Nice. Nice. So, so go ahead. Yeah. Yep. So with IV sedation, um, it's a whole beast in itself, right? But it's a very, very important thing to have because you can do, right? You can even do uh, wisdom, like wisdom teeth cases uh, are going to be traditionally your go-to for this. So when you're doing it in office, having an hour visit, sitting the patient yourself, it's a huge ROI. Um, and not as much for full arch. I'd say anything over about a four, four hour, I'd say maybe three to four hour time limit. You, you will want to be bringing your gangster in like, uh, like Ryan here for BSCRNA, but anything okay. underneath that I'd say is fair game, whether it's an SRP patient or just a few feelings or crowns or right. And really how to make your, your day of production go from maybe, you know, 3k to 7k just in one visit. Got it. Got it. And how often are you sedating your patients yourself in your own office versus bringing in like Ryan? So I do have a startup right now. So I'm still working on my credentialing since I got into my new startup, which is only, um, about three and a half months in. Okay. So I have my board at my ins- office inspection here in two weeks. So I'm excited to finally start doing it again. Uh, but I was doing about, I'd say about six cases a week, nothing crazy. Uh, but it's tremendously valuable, uh, mainly because of the time limit. So when you're doing oral sedation, it takes forever for the patients to feel the oral sedation meds to really kind of kick in, right? Well, that could be 45 minutes in some patients, it could be up to two hours in some patients for the metabolism to really hit the drugs. And when you're using oral meds, it's kind of a guessing game. You're just guessing what that, what that perfect amount may be for the patient, but you may accidentally, uh, just kind of snow the patient <laughs> and kind of plow them, right? Like you could give them point, you know, point five milligrams of halcyon and, and your, and your intentions are to keep the patient extremely safe. But what if you're accidentally bringing this patient into a level of deep sedation versus mild sedation or moderate, right? So we love IV because it's extremely safe, uh, right? Because you're going to be treating the patient's anxiety is the main reason we use it. So the amount of medications we give is based on when does the patient, uh, you know, chill out basically and their anxiety reduces, but we're not treating them based on uh, like leg movement. <laughs> so we see, we noticed that at our, at our big, their last big course when we were doing, we've had two courses now for IV and we've noticed that a lot of the doctors will try to treat movement rather than anxiety. But what keeps IV sedation so safe is being able to just treat the anxiety uh, while keeping the patient safe. 
Awesome. Awesome. Ryan, I'm going to bring you into the conversation here, buddy. So um, as somebody that does this on a, on the regular every single day, um, there's a difference between being a practitioner and being an instructor. What attracted you to be um, getting into education and actually teaching doctors, uh, dentists specifically, um, this skill set? Sure. So um, I've worked with Dan now. Uh, it's been a couple of years we've worked together. And um, he started talking about this uh, a little over a year ago. And um, I kept telling him, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to teach. It's not for me. Because like you said, there's a difference between being a practitioner and an educator. Um, he kept pursuing me for months and months. And um, just a lot of uh, conversation with my wife and um, conversation at home, I realized, you know, this is actually a very valuable skill that I'm able to talk to people about and teach. And um, these these dental offices, you know, like Dr. Brisky said, you know, oral sedation can only get you so far. I, I get called into a ton of offices where they have a patient that they just have used nitrous with. That's a big thing. You know, everybody can put their patient on nitrous and they're like, you know, this patient did not respond to nitrous. They didn't do anything at all. And so now I need to call in a specialist. Um, this is where I kind of found the need to be able to teach a level of sedation that can be safe um, as well as effective. I like that. I like that. So tell me how you got into niching the dental profession in the first place you're you're um doing sedations for dental mm -hmm. offices how, how did that come about um very very interesting niche that you've selected yes it is it totally is um i thought that i was going to be working in a hospital my entire career um i actually was getting my teeth cleaned and the dentist said, do you, uh, I was telling him what I do. And he goes, you don't um, come into the office at all and do sedations in office, do you? And I said, I didn't even know that was a thing. What do you mean? He goes, oh, I have this guy that I call in and he comes in and does sedation. And um, I've, so my ears perked up because uh, it's just something that I've always kind of had a passion about doing some kind of niche anesthesia, um, something a little bit more specialized. Um, so I contacted that person and from that person, it just kind of grew into my own thing um, where I have the ability to uh, just select my own offices, select the people that I work with. Um, I've been able to work um, with plastic surgeons in their offices. I work at a couple of fertility clinics doing uh, IV sedation for fertility patients um, as well as dental. So, awesome. Such an interesting yes. way to go with yeah, it. Yes, it's all over the place, but I love it. And it's just so, so patient specific. You really feel like you're a part of these patients' lives. And um, uh, it's it's a super, super rewarding career. I absolutely love it. Right on. Hey, hey Dan, I'm going to switch back over to you. Maybe you could kind of talk this audience through what it takes to get your IV sedation license. And I, I we can talk at, at part two of the the question would be which states allow this and how difficult is it to get your your license in each particular state but first of all what does the curriculum look like uh, how many hours are we looking at uh, what kind of patient interactions and, and those sorts of things are going to be necessary for you to to finish the the course work at csi yeah of course <clears throat> one bonus for our program is we've done a ton of recording so we actually flew out for almost like a week long uh, out to San Diego with Dr. Dune's brother. And we did all the IV sedation recordings uh, in terms of the curriculum uh, right online. So everything is actually online now. So we've, we've found, I think, a, a really kind of good middle ground here where you're not sitting in a classroom for five different weekends. You can do a majority of the modules and the a to Z learning from a textbook from just at home from the board and board certified anesthesiologist. Um, each state is actually very, very different. The reason it's taken about a year to try to figure this stuff out is uh, we have to call almost every individual dental board in the state and every single 50 states and figure out who's similar and who's not. Mm -hmm. uh, we've found some that are a little bit more particular. Uh, some, if you turn or, you know, if you, when you're doing these cases, you have to submit a certain amount of sedations. Mm -hmm. uh, so in Colorado, in most states, you have to do minimally 12 live sedations on patients. Uh, but if you use the wrong medications, like if you give too much Versed or if you give uh, too much fentanyl, you're going to get a lot of questions back. <laughs> so it's a it's a sweet spot. The 
to do these cases correctly and not get a bunch of questions from from the board. Um, we are a little bit different in the way that we're attacking the cases. I'd say each 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 doc has been getting about 23 to 24 sedations and about a quarter of them are on real life surgeries. So when I took my IV sedation, Dune and I did it together and we flew four different weekends and the last weekend we did our sedations, but our sedations were all on profi patients. So all I did was I found my IV, I dispensed one milligram of Versed, maybe 50 mics of fentanyl if I was lucky. And then we would do a cleaning and the patient would be out the door. So getting back from that, I was very scared. <laughs> I was like, what happens if I push two milligrams, <laughs> right? Because you yeah. just don't, you don't know that answer. So we are formulating a little bit different where we're going to get some more real life situations inside of your experiences. So I'd say about a quarter of docs, quarter of the cases that you'll do. So maybe five to six will be under wisdom teeth cases. So we'll run this program jointly with our wisdom teeth and implant course. So you'll actually going to be starting to treat pain, right? Anxiety and pain as well. So there's a, there's a definitely a big specifics that pops up, um, right? We're not just treating just anxiety. We're also helping the patient have a better experience uh, while they're having a surgery done. Hey, Doc. We see you, seeing patients eight to five, running the practice, managing a team, looking to expand or maybe acquire a new practice, planning the marketing strategy, bringing on an associate, oh, and trying to have a normal family life and personal life outside of work as well. It's a lot. Imagine having the tools to create a stress-free practice, attract more patients, and increase your profitability. With detailed scripts, proven strategies, and insider tips, you'll finally see the success you've always dreamed of. Enter the Dental Success Network Manuals. Developed by industry experts, this six-manual set covers operations, acquisitions, associates, startups, marketing, and front office. These manuals will provide you with the knowledge to make smarter business decisions and pave the way for more efficient and successful practices. The Dental Success Manuals, your guide to unlocking your full potential in practice ownership. Just visit dentalsuccessnetwork.com forward slash manuals for more information and use the code COSTUS10 for 10% off the Ultimate Bundle. As a reminder, Dental Success Network members get access to the digital version of Volume 1 in this set, the Dental Success Network Operations Manual. Check it out inside Workplace dentalsuccessnetwork.com forward slash manuals. I like that. Ryan, I'm going to switch back to you for a sec. What is the typical case that you are sedating in a dental practice? Are we talking about cosmetic stuff, um, surgical stuff? And then what is the time frame? Like, are you doing the short ones that are on very, very anxious patients that um, in an office where the doctor doesn't have an IV sedation permit, um, all the way to advanced surgeries. So what, what does that look like? What does your day look like in the typical dental office? Sure. Exactly what you said. Um, it is like this morning I had a patient just extreme dental anxiety. She was getting one filling and a teeth cleaning. Um, so that office doesn't have a sedation license. So I go in there, put her to sleep for those basic you know, procedures. It was an hour or a little over an hour long case. Um, and these will go all the way up to, well, I'll do the all on X's with everybody, you know, that are, you're going six hours. Um, so it's, it's a wide, wide variety of people. You're treating a wide range of patients too. Um, well, all with different health issues. Um, you know, some of the patients are pretty, it, it's kind of a fine, you have to figure out like, where the patient's health lies. Um, Some of these people are pretty sick. And if they are too sick, they get referred into the hospital. But um, if they are kind of on the border and on the cusp of something where I feel comfortable for, that's kind of a reason that I'm being brought in because I'm a specialist in this. I I work in the hospital. I've seen all this stuff. Um, So those are the cases that I get to see. But I also do get to see cosmetic stuff. I'll do veneers. I'll do um, everything, everything. And with your highly 
anxious patients, say that it's a restorative case and you're doing some, you're doing a bunch of veneers or you're doing a bunch of crowns and there's, there's follow-up procedures that are necessary. Are these really anxious patients like requiring that you sedate them for like delivery and stuff that's not necessarily going to require even anesthetic? Yes, I have been called back for delivery of them as well. Um, it's just kind of once they establish that comfort level with me, um, it's kind of where they like to be. They don't, they have such an anxiety. They don't want to hear any machine. They don't want to see somebody in their mouth, you know, mm -hmm. so they'll call me in just that. Um, it's, it's definitely something that I do and uh, something that there is an, is, is a thing out there for. Gotcha. Gotcha. Now from, uh, from a fee perspective, you know, you don't have to get specific about how much the fees are, but is the typical dental office having a separate transaction where you're billing the patient and collecting from the patient and then there for their side, billing and collecting the patient? Or are you dealing with insurances and all that stuff? How, how does that work from your, from your end? Yeah. So I just do separate billing with the patients. Um, okay. I am a separate entity from them. So yeah, I just bill the patient directly and um, do all that transactions myself. Gotcha. Gotcha. So Dan, when, when we are teaching, say the single implant class with wisdom teeth, um, and there's going to be, uh, you know, a handful of IV sedation students there simultaneously, um, uh, paint the picture for what that looks like. Are there going to be a bunch of Ryan's there kind of making sure that, um, everybody has, you know, um, an expert standing over their shoulder. Um, how, how is that going to work? Cause you and I are going to be in uh, wearing surgical hats, sur surgical instructor hats. So we're going to be in the room, uh, making sure that, you know, um, flaps are correct and people are removing the, the bone from the, the appropriate spots during wisdom tooth removal and suture and suture design and all that stuff. So we'll be in there and then the, the student will be in there and then the IV sedation student will be in there. And then they, I'm, I'm assuming that they're going to have some expert standing with them uh, to know which drugs to push and how to monitor. So what's that going to look like? Yeah, of course. So it will be a popular room. <laughs> we'll have yeah. the, the student and the main the main doctor, right? Then we'll have a doctor usually partnered up with the doctor that's doing the surgery. So we have the doctor and another doctor that's doing the assisting. Mm -hmm. um, from there, we'll have a mentor in the room. Uh, we have one-on-one -on -one, uh, mentorship in every single surgery operatory that we do. So we'll have a mentor. So that's number three. Mm -hmm. The fourth would be kind of me popping in and out of all the rooms. I commonly will just run around every day and enter every single room and just spot for any areas that can help improve some of the teaching in. Mm -hmm. um, and then we'll have the doctor administering the sedation. So the one pushing the drugs. And then we'll have a doctor that's doing the recording, uh, the recording of the drugs themselves. Yeah. Um, then we'll have a, a doc like Ryan that's doing just like I'm doing, where he's going in and out of, Ryan will be going in and out of three different rooms. Um, I'll be going in and out of six different rooms. So we're kind of, right, we're spreading the level a bit. So I'd say, but there's about five people in the room. Uh, good news is at the new facility, the rooms are definitely a little bit on the bigger side. So we still have plenty of room for, for docs to kind of pop their head in. And it's pretty fun for these weekends because there's so much, there's so many things going on, right? Where we could be removing some impacted wisdom teeth and then the doc doing the sedation wants to lean over and, and check out how we're, we're cutting the window, <laughs> right? And then the operator doctor taking the wisdom teeth out or peeking over and they're like, yeah, give them another milligram of Versa, right? It's, yeah. the, it's a lot of cross learning too. <laughs> Cause uh, some people start to become hyper aware of, you know, when people do need extra meds or um, want to pick up an extra tip or two <laughs> from the surgical side as well. It's, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty neat dynamic. Yeah. I can't wait. Can't wait to see it all come together. Ryan, when, you know, you're kind of coaching and teaching dentists, to do this on their own, um, there's going to be, you know, a wide range, wide range, just like there is surgically. There's going to be a wide range. Some people are going to be very, very uncomfortable with the whole process and the whole notion that they could potentially do something wrong and put a patient's health or life at risk, right? And then there's going to be people that are more cavalier, more the, the cowboys that we call them, that come in and they're just like, all right, I want to, I want to drop 
I want to learn how to drop people to the deepest level of sedation that's legally possible and I will be responsible for it and I'm good. Don't worry about me. So what happens with <laughs> the people that what happens with the people that are are wanting to be purposely really conservative and utilize this as a tool, but want to kind of uh stay out of the deeper waters. Uh is there a protocol for that? And is it would that level of education um, and comfort still be useful in their dental offices? Yeah. So there's not specifically a protocol for it, but what we always teach, like from the very beginning, is like what Dr. Brisky said: we're not treating movement of the patient; we're treating anxiety of the patient; we're treating, you know, the patient's feeling. So mm-hmm. it's kind of putting that understanding that um, a from a dental perspective, being the dentist during the procedure, you're not going to be sedating a patient to the level that a CRNA would be coming in sedating somebody to. Um, and it's a healthy understanding of these are the medications that you can administer. These are the doses that you can administer on a safe level. These are the amount of times you can wait to see the effect of the drug. And then when the drug wears off. So we kind of get to see, we, we have these longer procedures when we're doing implants and things. So they can see if I give a milligram of Versed, um, I can tell what happens over that next 30 minutes, what happens over that next 45 minutes and how I want to treat that and which drug I want to use, how to use them. Um, We go over the physiology of drugs. We go over the anatomy of the body on placing IVs. I mean, uh, we kind of do the whole entire gambit. When I first started doing this, I didn't even realize, but um, some dentists don't even know how to draw up the meds, you know? So it's teaching like, This is how I draw it up. This is how I administer it. And like you said, some are very, very cautious. They are pushing. They're looking at the lines, counting the lines on the syringe as they're pushing them, you know, to make sure like this is how it works, which I think is fantastic. And I think uh, when you're using this in your practice by yourself without somebody like me around, you do want to be safe and you don't want to get yourself in trouble. You're just trying to assist the patient in their anxiety. You know, I love that. I love that. Is there a way? it's, It's. Go ahead. ahead. A lot of the time, it's the docs who push the meds too fast. (laughs) Those are the ones that actually get in trouble. So those guys, uh, which are most docs, will be cautious inherently. Uh, Those are, I'd say, I don't know if Ryan agree with me, and it's definitely the more successful docs that that we find. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Ryan, is there something that a doctor that wants to come in hot and like super prepared, um, what's, what's your recommendation for anything that they should have uh, as far as, you know, um, pre-training or anything like that? Should they go take a phlebotomy course? Like what, what should they do to come in and get the maximum benefit from their time with you? Um, I don't, it is not necessary for them to take a phlebotomy course. I think everything that we are able to teach uh, during the time we allot for each unit that we're teaching um, is, is more than sufficient. So I think what you need to come in as, you need to come in with a, a very open mind and come in to learn uh, a new skill um, and be patient. You know, these are, these are new skills to these people. So you're not going to come in and just be doing amazing on everything and you're not going to know everything. Um, these are things that we're going to be teaching you. So yeah, I think just come in with an open mind for sure. Yeah. Like PRF is a really good practice for it. Um, for me, when I started learning blood draws, cause I found it's substantially harder to actually hit a needle, hit a ner- hit a, an artery, actually getting a blood draw than I found when I was doing a catheter. So I feel like when I'm poking someone with a catheter, getting the IV started, it was way easier. Like you poke it once and it get this flash and you could put the catheter in. But when I'm getting the blood out, I feel like still I'm I'm still having to move the needle up and down or sideways to get the blood to keep dripping out. That was a little bit frustrating. So I think practice with PRF is super helpful. Uh, and then I think if people will be a little surprised how easy it is to start an IV after if you can start uh, doing blood draws. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Good stuff. So gentlemen, thank you guys so much for uh, coming on today and uh, and kind of sharing some of your expertise. Uh, Dan, is there anything that uh, we could share with the audience about when the next class will be, um, what the protocol is for getting signed up for that? They reach out to Chris or you or, or to hair. Um, What, what's next for people that are interested? Yeah, of course. So we are starting our new rounds of sedation docs starting in February and March time. So we're going to be taking eight to 10 doctors this round. Um, So we're trying to keep it a little bit more of an intimate class size. 
Uh, so we are learning um, some, some really, really, really learning into this stuff. So small, small group size, 10 docs. We're going to be starting in February and March. I think we're already half full, a third to half full already. It seems to be a pretty popular class, which we've loved. Mm-hmm. Um, so definitely go Google us, coloradosurgical.com. Uh, we you can check out our course for IV sedation as well as something for implants or all on X that we teach for full arch and a wisdom teeth. Um, a lot of these courses, when you do come out twice, you'll be at one of those courses. So you'll get experience. You'll see some of the surgery, uh, and you'll also be doing some live sedations on wisdom teeth cases specifically. Gotcha. Awesome. Well, gentlemen, it's been a pleasure, Ryan. It was, it was nice to get to know you. I can't wait to see you, uh, there in Colorado in Greeley, Colorado at our next course. Um, welcome to the team. We're so glad to have you. And, uh, we'll talk to you guys very That's soon. Colorado surgical Institute.com. What was that, Ryan? Oh, I was just going to say also, um, this is sedation is something that is amazing that you can add to your practice. Like it is just a huge, huge benefit to your patients. So um, it's super exciting that we get to offer this. I'm really, really excited about it. We are going to take limited docs from Colorado. We're going to draw a circle around where uh, Ryan works. <laughs> and uh, oh, yeah, I, <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> but it's kind of funny because a lot of docs will come into the program thinking they're going to stay at every course. But Ryan, I think, is more busier than he ever has been <laughs> doing the teaching because people find out what to sedate and what not to sedate, sedate specifically. So it's, it's just a really cool learning experience. Awesome. Awesome. I'm super excited. This has been amazing. Um, this has been an amazing journey. Uh, I was there uh, in San Diego when we were filming all those videos and I was getting more and more excited with every video that we uh, were able to record uh, with Dr. Dune, uh, Dr. Dune's brother, Dr. Dune, uh, who's a medical analyst. <laughs> Guy is so brilliant. He had so much information just off the top of his head. It was, it was actually a little intimidating. The guy's uh kind of one of those photographic memory kind of guys, uh, but good, very, very good at what he does. So um, this curriculum is going to be airtight. It's going to be very, very solid. And I can't wait to share it with, with the masses. So thank you, gentlemen. And uh, we'll talk to you both very soon. Awesome. awesome. Thank, thank you, you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Dan Brisky and Ryan Rolla. This episode is being brought to you by our good friends over at CareStack. CareStack is the all-in-one cloud-based solution for seamless scheduling, efficient insurance verification, and in-depth analytics and reporting. Get a deeper understanding of your business with streamlined revenue cycle management and comprehensive clinical notes, all designed to elevate your practice to the next level. Visit carestack.com today to book a free demo. Tell them I sent you and get two months free when you switch over. carestack.com, C-A-R-E-S-T-A-C-K.com. And that wraps it up for another episode of the Dentalpreneur Podcast. Look forward to reconnecting on the next episode. Thank you so much for joining us today on the Dentalpreneur Podcast. Check out TrueDentalSuccess.com for full recaps of every show, a schedule of our live events, free video tutorials, and a whole host of practice-building resources. 